In this video, I'm gonna be making a planing jig for use with hand planes uh, for thicknessing. Very useful for particular styles of woodworking like Japanese kumiko, but I'm gonna be using it for a couple of different projects which you'll see in videos to come. So welcome to, I'm not sure what channel this is gonna be published on because it's relevant to my Japanese woodworking channel because of the kumiko. It's also relevant to my prospecting channel, but it's woodwork, so it won't be there. But the stuff I'll be making with it, I'll be using on the prospecting channel. I've done a lot of the work already at the men's shed. Now at home, I'm gonna be putting it together. I'm sorry about the wind, and I'm sorry about the dappled light, but I had to take my tarp down because of the dappled, not the dappled light, because of the dappled, because of the wind. The wind is, is, is just full on. Uh, so hopefully the sound quality is okay with the lapel mic. I've chosen Californian Redwood for this project because it's of its dimensional stability. Other benefit is that it's incredibly light. But right now, I've got to take all these uh, dressed bits and put them together. This is, this is the bed of the jig. Oh, that's not great. Where's my good pair? That's not good enough. At this point, we'll just have a short mental health interlude. One of the challenges with depression, uh, one of the symptoms, uh, one of the things like on the checklist is that you have you have a, a struggle with doing ordinary everyday stuff like pick that up put it away stuff that should be incredibly simple but is actually really really difficult so something that i'm going to do for to help to get you guys to help me is that on my videos, I'm going to include a little bit of time lapse of me cleaning up. And just as a way of, of me being accountable to you that I'm actually making progress with the boring stuff as well as the, the fun stuff that I do on the videos. So that's what the little time lapse shorts are going to be. Um, I've now got that to the point where I can almost close that door. Fill two bins up, one with wood scraps, one with plastic. So that's enough for now. And let's get on with some fun stuff. Ah, there you are. Yeah, excellent. So that's going to go there-ish. And that's going to go there-ish. And to hold that together, it's going to work better if I come from the underside. But I want to mark out my holes. I'm probably going to go for overkill with the screws because I don't want there to be any wobble in this. And I'm... I, and if I wanted to be absolutely certain, I'd, I'd add some bracing and stuff, but I'd, you know, if possible, I'd like to avoid that. And there-ish. Okay, so we go from here to there. Now again, this might be overkill, but I don't want this to move. I'm gonna use quite a long screw. Uh, now I want the holes in the baseboard to be free of the threads all right next thing is i want this to land centered on the um the uprights Right, well I just got chased inside by the rain before. And I'll tell you what, I'm missing my tarp. I'm gonna have to do something about that. Look at that, just a little bit of rain and I've got rust on it already. Grr. Excellent. Okay, now Californian Redwood is so soft, you have to treat it very carefully. I'm now gonna tap and flush. To make sure that each screw, every screw is below below this surface. Some fabulous artistic framing you know, of the shot there. But what I was doing is nailing on these strips which hold the plane uh, centered over the, the working area. And what I'm using is these, these copper, copper nails. So the reason I'm using copper nails is that copper is very soft. And if the plane runs out of the race, 
and clips a nail, it's much less likely that I'm going to chip the blade with a copper nail than it is with a steel nail. And since I've already come out of the race once, uh, I think that was a good bet. and now I better show you how I've been using it. Now over there, I have three Japanese toolboxes that I've made up for storing camping gear in. And I need to do the lids. Now in the little thickness cheek, it is 59 mil deep. And these bits of wood are about uh, uh, 52 or so. Uh, 21 would be too much. So with 10, we go with six. And they need to rest on something. So we put that in there. Lock, and then where's my wedge? There's my wedge. Wedge goes in. Hammer locks them in. Stick them in there. And there, sticking up above the sides there, a, a smidge. If we wanted to lock that in a little bit, just get another wedge. Now I had the, the six millimeter strip in there, so if I take that out and replace it with the nine, we can take the three mil off the other side. Over time, I'm gonna get some more strips with different graduations, so I've got a little bit more uh, flexibility in the steps that I take. Don't have to make as big a jumps. All right, so that's how I get all my strips the same width. I've got another project where I'll show you how I get them all the same thickness. I've gotta get some strips done uh, where it's very important that they're all the same thickness uh, and 1.1 meters long. And that's actually, this is what I built the jig for is this project that I'll show you in the next video, which also has a bit of steam bending in it. Uh, so if you wanna see that, uh, if you, and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you actually get notified when the videos come out. Uh, other than that, have fun, and I'll see you online. Bye-bye.